The power of habit is that it will help you last long. Whatever you are doing now is a seed you are sowing for the future. Prayer is one of the tools that God has given us to be intimate with Him. Tell your neighbor, I hate so far. I hate so far. It's not my fault. I hate so far. Confronting your fears. Amen. What's the message? Confronting your fears. Confronting your fears. So all the month long we've been looking at fear-related topics. How we can live above and beyond fears. Amen. And why is that important? Because a lot of people are stopped by fears. Amen. A lot of people are stopped by fears. A lot of people are never able to take steps in line with their plans and their desires for the year because of their fears. Going side by side with our teachings on fears, we've also been teaching faith so that you are equipped to actually deal with the demands of the year. Praise the Lord. Messages have also come in the line of your purpose, your vision. You are equipped for 2021. Praise the Lord. There's just no reason why you will not excel. Hallelujah. Confronting my fears. In Joshua, the first chapter, Joshua 1, take it from verse 6 or verse 5, if you, if you find verse 5. Amen. Praise the Lord. A father's greatest desire is to be believed. Amen. And his greatest pain is to be doubted. Amen. When a father speaks, he hopes to achieve one thing. If nothing, just believe what I'm telling you. It will be good. Amen. And so God begins to speak to Joshua. He said, There shall not any man be able to stand before you. God is speaking to his servant, Joshua. He said, Nobody will be able to stop you. Amen. Hello? Hello? Man, my hands are standing. You know what it means when God shows up and God begins to tell you, nobody can stop you. Now, 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 this is again one of those reasons why we're teaching what we're teaching, but also one of the reasons why sometimes I get really angry. Amen. Because according to God, nobody was going to ever be able to stop Joshua. Not even the devil. And again, like I've often said, the devil is not your problem. Be careful what you are listening and believing. Am I talking to somebody? God is looking at a man and God does not even consider the devil in this equation. Tell me the devil is not my problem. Tell me witches are not my problem. There shall not any man. Any. Tell me any. It didn't matter the nationality, it didn't matter the body size, it didn't matter the race, and God is speaking, and all God wants is, will my son, will my daughter, will that child of God who keeps coming to church, who keeps listening online, who keeps moving from service to service, will he for once just believe me that there is nothing to stop him? There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. So me, the devil can never be my problem. Say, the devil will never be my problem. Hallelujah. No. He said, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. There was a consciousness that Moses was walking in. Can you imagine? When Moses, when Moses came to a country, huh? his criminal records, has, have, have, they've not deleted it. When he ran out of the country, he ran as a fugitive. He had a crime committed. But he came back to that country. No single police could hold him. Even the president could not stop him. Because there was something he had touched. The man who ran scared out of the country was not the man that came back. Hallelujah. In 2021, hmm? you're a different person. 
The things you were scared of are over. You know yourself better. You know your God better. Look at it. He says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you. Know what? Forsake you. So me, God never forsakes me. Do you understand what that means? Hello? Hello? So even when you're going through whatever you're going through, if you're going through anything, he says, I'll never leave you. Know what? Forsake you. Amen. So me, even in the storm, he, never, he neither leads me, he neither leaves me, nor forsakes me. God will never leave you. Hallelujah. That's why it will take a strong conviction, either from the enemy or from something else, or from someone else, for you to reach a point where you start feeling like God has left me. You know, I, I'll be sincere with you, you know, man, can, I, I don't want to pray for somebody. May God give you the heart of a child. I don't lie to you. Since I gave my life to Christ, huh? there's never been a day. I've never doubted God, that God is with me. I can't, it's not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in that dimension. I don't feel like, I feel like God has left me. <laughs> calm down, calm down. Amen. Stop following your feelings. So me has never left me. He will never leave me. The same way your skin wouldn't leave you. He's closer than your skin. Am I talking to somebody? Not to talk of failing you. So, so, so God comes out now and he preaches this good sermon to, to him. But see the condition he gives, he gives to him. Go to the verse, verse 6 now. He says, only be strong. Tell me be strong. Say, I got to be strong. Say, I want to be strong. Say, I have to be strong. He said, be strong and of a good courage. Hallelujah. Be what? Be strong. Don't be timid. Don't be cowardly. He says, I'd have you be courageous. Praise the Lord. I'd have you be courageous. For unto these people shall that divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers. Hallelujah. What's God speaking to you? When God comes and shows up in your life in January and is coming to you and is speaking to you that you, you need to overcome fear. What's telling you is there's everything good in this land. Amen. Amen. So there are good things for me in 2021. Everything good. You can divide the goodies of the year if you just be strong. So me, I gotta be strong. So I gotta be bold. You know, some translations say be bold and courageous. Be bold and courageous. Have confidence. Don't be doubtful and don't be fearful. Hallelujah. So me, I refuse to fear. So I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. A lot of people would rather, you know, um, <laughs> defend. I'm not an advocate of defense. Amen. Praise the Lord. The best form of defense is offense. Hello? The best form of what? We have taught the church much, and a lot of the teachings out there for the church is mostly an, a defensive one. You wait every time when you are under attack for you to now stand up. No. Attack the attacker. Am I talking to somebody? This is why strikers get paid mad money. Men who are bold enough to come against the opposition. Men are screaming for you when you are able to take the ball from your defense and play everybody and get to the goal. Why? Because you're an attacker. And we celebrate counter-attack so much. Hallelujah. He said be bold. And I'm going to show it to you today from Scripture. Can you go with me to um, First Samuel? Go with, with me to First Samuel. First Samuel, the 17 chapter from verse 33. First Samuel 17 from verse 33. Let's look at what I'm saying. You see, fears are not to just be you are waiting for it to come before you do something about it. No, confront it. That's something you know, confrontation. So make confrontation. An open confrontation with your fears. 
You see, you see, there's several of you who already you already know your fears. We are not trying to discover what your fears are. Now, now don't take up a timid attitude. Don't be timid and be waiting and hoping that it doesn't come because it will come. And you don't want to be under attack. You want to be the one attacking. I'm asking you somebody. Go for your fear this year. Praise the Lord. Conquer your fears. Conquer your fear. Take a bold step. So we know this story. I've been teaching on it and making reference to it for some time. So we have, we have Goliath, the giant. Tell me the giant. For some folks, their fears are giants. There are things that have become gigantic oppositions to your life and to your progress. It's as if this thing will not move. You've got to face it. Hallelujah. Face your fears. And Goliath, for 40 days, is mocking the God of Israel and cursing the Israelites. And David shows up. The Bible says all the men of the army, trained officers, soldiers, trained by nature with uniform, army with ranks and everything, including the very king. All of them were scared. And David shows up. And he said, what is that I'm hearing? Somebody insulting my God. Hey! Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can I speak to somebody? May the enemy not rejoice over you. Amen. Amen. Listen, somebody. This year, you're not going to put God to shame. Amen. You always say God not going to put us to shame. Are, we all about, are, are you putting God to shame? Are you living up to the name God has called you? Because God is able to do his own part. You will not make God ashamed. They were, they, were, they were making a shame of God as though God was a small man. As though God, God was an ordinary man. As though Goliath had become a God. Nobody could move. So me, I'll move. Say, I will move. I'll move on behalf of my family. I'll move on behalf of my children. I'll make the move. I'll face my fears. I'll fight my battles. I'll get out of my comfort zone. And so they hear David was angry and says, I can deal with this guy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Say me, I can have a harvest. Say me, I can have a harvest. Say, I can have a harvest this year. Amen. Thou are not able, Saul speaks to him. Saul begins to tell him, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. Suddenly shows up telling him, you can't. You know, all rationalizations and excuses and explanations. Why? He says, for thou art but a youth, and he, and he a man of war from his youth. Amen. So me, I'm not too young to do great things. Say, I'm not too young to do great things. Not too young. Praise the Lord. You don't have to be 40. You don't have to be 50. Before you start living your life. If you start hearing the truth early and if you be humble and take the heart of a child quickly to accept the truth that God is dropping on you and learn to climb on the shoulders of those who have been before you, there's no place you can go. Here is a man who begins to undermine him. Sometimes in life you'll be undermined. People will look down at you, look at you, look at your body size, look at your age, look at your country, look at your sex, look at your looks, whatever it is, and count you out. Listen, men may count you out, but never count yourself out. Am I talking to somebody? Men may not give you a chance, but give yourself a chance. Men may be afraid for you, but don't be afraid. You have courage and be bold for them. Look at what happens in verse 34. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept, he kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. Praise the Lord. Next, to me a lion and a bear. And I went after him. So me, I went after him. That's confrontation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait for it to come for you. Remember, the bear did not come for him. The bear went for his flock. And he was mad. 
Hello? It's high time we, you, me, us, started doing the spiritual attack. Am I talking to somebody here? It's time we stopped this victim mentality of being the ones always attacked. Hello? So my attitude. Say habits. Define our lives. Look at what's, what's happening here. I want you to really pay close attention to what is happening and to watch the pattern because it will, it will repeat itself again. He says, when I saw the lion and when I saw the bear, he says, I went after him. Hello? <laughs> last, last week I spoke about how to deal with fears. Today, if I have time, I may go into it a bit, a bit more. When it's new, you, you see, you see, when you look at when you when you imagine the man David, you can tell David was prepared for this day. Hello? You see, the problem with the church sometimes and with folks many times is they always we like to assume something will not happen. We like God forbid. We like to say God forbid as if when God when you say God forbid, that means it is over. Amen. God forbid. If you like, God forbid it a hundred times, some things are bound to come and bound to happen. And the earlier you start being prepared for it, the, the better for every one of us. Praise the Lord. I said something last week. The reason why the organizations and, and a lot of folks from the world are prospering is because they plan and they prepare. They have answered every question. If light goes out, I do this. They, they, condition, if condition, amen. Actions to take if something happens. Are you prepped up for what is coming? Hello? So here he is, as a shepherd, he had been thinking, if one of these days the, the, the lion were to come against my animal, what would I do? Enter prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Enter prayer. No! You were supposed to be praying since. The day it comes, that's the day you get into action. Am I talking to somebody? An unprepared man, huh? many times will always resort to prayers. You resort to prayers as a final solution. And prayer was supposed to be done before the battlefield. I'm not, I'm not speaking English today. And, and what happened in one of those occasions? We, Moses, is at the battlefield and he wants to cry out to God. And God is, why are you calling out to me now? You have it in your hand. What is in your hand? What is in your hand? Stretch your hand forth. Amen. Great miracles happen when men take steps. Hello? Great miracles what? One of those days. Lepers. Prophet, prophet has come and has given prophecy. By this time, tomorrow, so-and-so will sell for so-and-so. Things will be cheap and there will be food available for everybody. Prophet has prophesied and has gone. The whole nation was still inside waiting for God to do a miracle. Then some lepers said, you know, we are tired. If we stay here, we die. If we go there, we may die. But we don't know. Let's try. Amen. So me, those who say, if I die, let me die, never die. And I speak to somebody now. Ah, yeah. It's high time this year, at least, say, you know, whatever happened, let it be. Take a step in faith. Whatever happens, what? Let it be. And those who say, if I die, let me die. We never die. Hallelujah. And this, this was a clear example. He said, I went after him, and I smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. Can you imagine that? Before he could even have time to bite it. To kill it. He said, uh-uh. Today, we die here. I think that was the shocker for the life of the lion. All its life. Let me speak to somebody. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. Never forget this one. The thing, you have af the thing you are afraid of also has its own fears. The Bible said the creation, everything created, they wait earnestly for the manifestation of the sons of God. There is something in them. There, there's something. In, when they look at you, there is something they see. The question is, what do you yourself see? 
So, yes, there's a lion. Yes, there's a bear. But for the first time, a bear had never seen itself being attacked by a man. One man. He didn't have team to say, you, you'll be coming from that side. Let me go. So by the time he's coming towards me, you strike it from behind. Hallelujah. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote and smote him and slew him. So it's my turn to smite. It's my turn to slay. It's my turn to confront my fears. Whatever it is. Amen. Whatever it is. There are steps you need to take this year. Take them. I made reference to fears of uncertainty. You are not sure of the outcome. That's why you take them. Whatever happens, let it be. Uncertainty happens. Hello? Look at you here today. Who knows how many times your parents tried before you came? But they kept trying. Scientists say there were over there were over three million cells that embark on a journey. Amen. Everybody's trying. Who will show up on the other side? Amen. What you did. It was what? Uncertain. We weren't sure they were, you know, in genetics will tell you. On certain outcomes, this is probably, call it probabilities. This could happen, this could happen, this could happen. So take a step. Am I talking to somebody? The business may work or it may not, but take a step. Take a step. Start the gym, amen. You may quit again, but it's fine. Start the gym. Hello? Just take a step. You never know. This time you may just click. When he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him. Can you imagine? And when I tried to get into his mind, imagine the state. Where, have you seen a lion before? Battle. I'm sure the lion was shocked. You know, is, is he... When you're used to doing battles with animals that are on, on, on all fours, it's different. This day you are with an animal, a guy standing tall. Who's this guy? Let me say this to you. You are unique. So me, I'm unique. I'm special. I'm different. There is nobody like me. Therefore, the devil has not fought my kind before. So you have new tricks you are bringing to the table. The problem, one of the problems with our world is, you know, for self-esteem issues, you, you think of yourself like you, you have been made to think or you think, compare yourself with other people. She tried, she failed. So you think if you try to, you will fail. Tell me, I don't fail. Say, my case is different. My case is different. 36. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Show me Goliath. Show me the giants. Say the fears. Say the problems, the challenges, the goals, the mountains in 2021 shall be like every other victory I've had in my life. Yeah. Yeah. You can be victorious here still. David is saying, it's the same principle, it's a habit. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You see, I always try to bring to your attention the place and importance of habit. The thing about habit is, if, if, if you're really a habitual person, it will affect every area of your life. If you are a serious person, well, you, you always want to do serious things. If you are someone who is meticulous, Anything you want to do, you're meticulous about it. it you know, I, I, was, I was listening to, to, to a great man the other day. He says, he says, he says, he says, he says, he says um, you're asking him questions about reading. And he says, um, I, I, never, I never start a book without, fin- without planning to finish it. 
You see, I never start a book and not finish it. It's just my rule and principle. When I start a book, I must finish it. Must. Of course, it's one of the most successful men in the world. And, and he says something like this. He said, there's a book I'm looking at right now. The book is a bit, a bit, a bit intriguing. Over 800 pages. So I'm trying to decide whether I, whether I should start it. I've, I've not yet decided. Because if I start it, I must finish it. Have it. Tell me, have it. So David is saying, the same way I killed the lion, the same way I killed the bear, exactly the same way. So exactly the same way. Exactly the same way. Amen. Hello? The same way you move from primary one to primary two. And from primary school to secondary. And from secondary to first course. And sec- second, first course to second. Up to where you are right now. The same way you should be confident. Amen. The thing that couldn't stop you, huh? in part fact, can't stop you now. So I was created to succeed. He says, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Because he has done this, there will be a problem. Go to 48 for me because of time. 48, quickly. Hallelujah. So I'm confronting my fears. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose, when it was time for battle. Before this, I, I, I don't know if you checked for this one for me. The Bible says, the Philistine began to curse David with his gods. Is it there? Is it 47 or is it higher? Check it for me. 47 verse. I think it's slightly higher. Anyway, the Philistine began to curse him. So me, I'm not afraid of curses. You know, I see, I see how people become incapacitated sometimes. So I'm afraid of, hey, please, 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 please. My God. Wrong teachings. Wrong teachings. Wrong teachings. Wrong teachings that are baseless and not based on truth. What do you want to use to curse me? The only curse huh, that may work Against me, huh? Is the curse that you use God Almighty to do if you can. Because he's the only true God. You can't be cursing me with Amadioha and think it will enter. Are you are you high? You must be high or in deep seated ignorance. What is wrong with you? Amadioha is not a God. Amadioha is not a God. It's not a God. You've sold lies to men and they've believed it and imbibed. I'm not your eyes, not a God. He said, We by their very natures, we are not gods from the beginning. Look at it. And the Philistine cursed David by his girls. You would think that by placing a curse, it, oh, it's a, oh, there's a curse. To, hey, don't go there. Don't you don't have, I'm better than that. Amen. <laughs> Listen to me. You say, I've said you are God. Tell me I'm a God. People should be cursing people in your name. Say, I curse you in the name of Daniel. <laughs> Amen. You know, by the name of Daniel, Daniel, you are the, you are the God. You see, you see, you see, ignorance will make you look down on yourself. You say, you say we were as grasshoppers in our eyes. You think you are nothing. Because if you've, you've believed, listened, you know, you've, you've seen hype so much things that by their very nature are not God. So me, I know who I am. I know who I am. Philistine said unto David, he says, am I a dog that you come to me with staves? The guy was shocked. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, <laughs> praise the Lord. You see, may God bless David. Amen. David was so conscious of who he was. You know, you know he wouldn't waste his energy and time. Huh? His weapon of warfare on Goliath. You're not getting me. They gave him, they gave him 
suited armor for battle. What is that? For who? Goliath. This man I will finish in first round. <laughs> this man, first round. Before I even reach where I am, we are, the fight is done. May God give you confidence. May God give you true confidence. The guy was shocked. David was just coming like that. Imagine just coming with only pants. Village boy, only pants and catapult. Let's put it that way. You come like that. And train stick. Amen. You can get it like it irritated him. Amen. You see, let me say this to you. When you know who you are, huh? You know where you put your confidence. Hello? <coughs> Hello? I pray for you. May, may, may God help you to be sophisticated. Hello? Sophistication from within. So that your confidence is not on the outer things. Every lady loves to look nice. Huh? We like to look perfect. Nice hairdo. Proper looks, you know, well dressed. Life is funny. It's one of those days you, when you least expect it, and you think you are not worthy. (laughs) Amen. You just be caught off guard. When you think you are not worthy, that is that's the worthiness. Girl, you're so fine. My God, I love, I love your natural look. And there, some people trust in horses and chariots. <laughs> <coughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Some people trust in horses and chariots. Amen. Horses. <laughs> and chariots. Amen. You gotta look nice. You gotta look nice. You know. Get the right outfit, everything. You know. It doesn't always work like that. Amen. David was coming the way he was, just as I am, just as I am. He's coming to the battlefield. Go back to 48. Let's finish it quickly. Hallelujah. So me, I'm too blessed to be cursed. Amen. And I, I made reference to something that I think I should um, elaborate on. I said, the only curse that may work is if you use God's name, the one true God, to curse. But how can you curse the same person whom God has blessed? So when you are declaring curses, it becomes a blessing. If you don't believe, ask Balaam and Balak. They tried it. And they tried to curse God's people. He called him. He hired him. You know? So we are bringing somebody all the way from Africa. Go get someone sophisticated herbalist from India to come and place curse. So you will see that Indian juju works well. Amen. Amen. And it has never, ever, huh? never. Listen to me. Let, let's be real. Okay? Can I be real with you a bit? Amen. Listen, listen to me. Listen. Listen to what I'm about to tell you now, guys. And I pray it's a sinking. If fetish powers were real, eh? Africa would be winning the World Cup. The richest men in the world huh, will be Indians. They will have access to the best technologies. I've told you again and again, there are things that work in the realm of the broke. The, 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 the end time it starts sinking, the better for you. Go and check it. 
So there's this football team who will go and meet a certain native doctor somewhere in one village right now. Then they are playing inter-village cup. They would win. Listen to my English. They would win. So you would think this same person, when it comes to state level, should win. The same priest, suddenly reaches village, he reaches state level, it's not working. We don't ever talk of national level. You see, the thing that is working is because of where you are. I don't know why you're laughing. I'm saying the truth while you're laughing. Hallelujah. Tell me, I know who I am. I know who I am. I can even prove what I'm saying now with you anatomically. And show you that the principles that hold true in one level or one layer is different from what holds true in another. What is the same principle taking place in superficial and what is taking place in deep is not the same, even in the oceans. So, so what you're experiencing is because of what you believe and where you are. And the, the pain sometimes is when God has taken you out of a certain level, but you still think and believe based on, your, on, where, you, on where you came from. And there's nothing God can do. Hallelujah.